very good evening everyone it feels great to come back uh, with another webinar uh, after a long time so the institution uh, innovation council of st peter's institute of pharmaceutical sciences feel proud to start our uh, webinar series self driven activity on introduction to ipr so today we have our speaker uh, dr prabha singh from uh, bncp mumbai now i request our principal uh, to welcome the delegates good evening everyone Uh, it's more than a pleasure to me to introduce uh, uh, this session. So, on behalf of Saint Peter's Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, I, Dr. P. Rajshekar, Principal, uh, like welcome all the delegates uh, from this state and other states as well and uh, abroad as well. So, welcome to the Institution Innovation Council self-driven activity. Uh, we, on behalf of Saint Peter's, welcome you for the webinar on a uh, introduction to intellectual property rights given by Dr. Prabha Singh. Assistant Professor SK, SVKM Dr. Banu Ben Nanavati College of Pharmacy, uh, Ville Parle, Mumbai. Uh, now I had this session to uh, Pravin back. Pravin, go ahead. Thank you for your kind words, sir. Uh, before we get on with the scientific session, we will have a short look at our uh, college. Area. scientific session now i request our uh, uh, president for uh, institution innovation council st peters and uh, head of the department of pharmaceutics dr rajeshri durke to introduce our speaker thank you sir it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our eminent speaker of today's session dr prabha singh assistant professor at dr banu ben nanavati college of pharmacy mumbai maharashtra she is having phd from sndt women's university in pharmaceutical technology specializing pharmaceutics with more than 12 years of academic teaching and research experience as well as 2 years of industrial training work experience as a junior research scientist in drug delivery systems sipla r&d vikroli mumbai she has also completed postgraduate diploma in patent law and practice in intellectual property in the year 2012 from svkm's nims institute of intellectual property studies mumbai She has completed certified online distance learning course for intellectual property rights from WIPO Worldwide Academy, Geneva, 2009. She has many national and international publications with high impact factor journal and a patent granted for her research work entitled Floating Microporous Osmotic Tablet to her credit. She has received many research grants from Mumbai University for conducting research work and also for, from companies like Skin Rituals and ACG Worldwide. She is recipient of college, uh, scholarship from Winkem USA of rupees seven lakhs fifty thousand. She is a member of many committees such as extracurricular, cultural committee, industrial training, placements, and many more at institution level. We are really very happy to have you on today's webinar organized by Institutions Innovation Cell, Saint Peter's. 
and i'm very very much thankful for madam uh, to madam for accepting our invitation at such a small and short notice period thank you so much and i'll uh, request madam to proceed with the session madam please unmute yourself madam. thank you so much for introducing me dr rashri dhurke i uh, actually know her very well she has been my senior actually phd so it's a pleasure being here and uh, uh, thank you sir thank you i thank the management uh, principal sir uh, dr pravin all the organizers uh, for taking their time and you know uh, doing this for the students because i think at the end of the day whatever we do is for the uh, upliftment of the students welfare so that's what our intention is this ipr i think uh, is what the world is aiming today uh, so i will start the session uh, as it's become very late so thank you everyone uh, shall i share my slides sure ma'am Uh, is it visible yes madam yeah, thank you uh, so today we are going to uh, i'm going to take a session on ipr uh, with regards to the various intellectual properties that are existing in today's market that we need, can explore if being even though it is something that people just associate patents to the only thing that is ipr when it comes to pharma but actually patents say allow me there is so much to learn about ipr and so much to apply when it comes to pharma so today i think everyone would be well aware that uh, uh, branding you know product branding has become one of the major uh, forces that i think most of the people our students are actually turning towards so it will be a, a session which is which is going to uh, talk to or give information regarding the general ips what are existing okay and what all can be utilized and what are the protections that will receive from it it's going to be uh not a very uh, like i'm not going to go like it's not going to be like a lecture session so it's going to be a basic understanding of all the various ipr that exist so i'll start with it so first of first and foremost we need to understand that ipr may first word comes as intellect so intellect means something that is coming from our brain it's our creativity so everyone has their own uh, what you can say ideas about uh, what it means to be intellect but intellectual intellectual ability as we say is ideas that are creative that are innovative or that are inventive so if you we have an idea in our head it is called it is our intellectual property and only we should have the right to utilize it so that is where the protection comes into play so we know that intellectual property rights is nothing but the ability of the mind to be creative and so the creativity comes in various forms but the most important thing is once this creativity is coming uh, in your in our head we need to protect it so that no one else can utilize it okay so that is intellectual so but everything about creativity okay whatever it is it is all intangible that is you can touch someone's creativity we can't touch our own creativity right it is just an idea and so if we are talking about rights which is a legal thing which is relates to the law because it is giving you some kind of a privilege so the moment we were attest the word privilege or law in it it means that it has to be something that can be seen that can be touched that can be felt so that's why whenever there is a property that is intellectual only it is an intangible asset which you cannot measure so that cannot be given protection till the time this intangible assets gets converted into a tangible uh, let's let's say uh, okay into a tangible asset we cannot give protection to it so whatever we think in our mind has to be made something that can be utilized that it has some value we can touch it we can feel it okay so then only it can be uh, it can be given the uh, you can commercialize it or it can give be given the protection so intangible assets by itself is mind's creativity okay so if an intellectual okay property means intellectual property as you can see there are two words here intellectual is our brain okay property is something that has a value to it something that can be touched felt it is a tangible asset 
as we know as we see ki if there is if we say there's a land so land is something we can see we can touch it is a property so that property has a commercial value so something that is only in our head does not have any commercial value so it needs to be something that is intangible converted into a tangible asset so that it can have a commercial value so then only it can get protection now next thing is that why we need protection for it or you know why why are we even talking about ipr today uh, i will tell you when i had done this course and learned about ipr even when we were doing our uh, you know studies that time ipr was not something that was you know uh, prevalent in india it was hardly few companies even okay in commercial com companies even knew very little about ipr there were hardly two institutes that time that were actually uh, tell, uh, uh, teaching what was intellectual property that was one was uh, nmims iips and the other one was nalsa okay long distance learning ipr so that time nobody knew but uh, what what is intellectual property what are the types of intellectual property and you know what is the use but slowly and steadily i think in the last 20 years uh, it has gained so much momentum that people have realized the importance of protecting their assets so it is just like we protect our property by keeping a building a fence around it it is just like that when we have something that is having intellectual property value okay we need to protect it and that is where and because if without protection we cannot utilize it without anybody trying to copy our work right so for our work our creativity we need to uh, make you can say profit out of it good for the human uh, for the social economic uh, strata for everything okay so but we need protection for that then only we can do something about it. all right so that's why ip is there so as you can see from this slide i'm trying to say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention so this uh, we know the story about the pro and thirst so the pro was thirsty so this was the earlier invention as we call it that the idea that clicked to the pro okay this was the inventive idea the tortoise and the hare story everybody knows that the tortoise though being slow uh, you know surpassed the rabbit okay so this was where you know this is as you can see from the pro story it is invention okay and today we are at this stage where it is innovation so it is the same thought process of thirst but instead of not throwing stones okay we use straws so what does it tell us that necessity is the mother of invention but creativity okay in innovation is having fun with invention that you bring something new to the table yours with your creativity okay so today if we see ipr ipr is all about invent uh, innovations if you see all the innovate uh, all the technology that we are seeing everything is innovation rather than we will call it invention okay so that is what uh, it is born out of it is a problem solution so as we can see a marketplace is a place where you can uh, you know you can it is born out of a solution if there was a problem someone identified a problem and then you find a solution for it and if it is not a problem solution then it has no value to it because it has no value to any human or you know uh, or to in general to the society so this was the uh, you can say invention back then in the 90 in the 1800s where you can see it was invented by a headmaster of an old school okay at scotland and what his invention was a blackboard today we all can relate to blackboards we uh, to, uh, not the younger generation i guess but you know the older generation can relate to blackboards because that is what we also we have grown up with, right study so invention of blackboard was made by the person who understood the need for it so there was a there was a lacuna that the uh, headmaster identified that you know this is a place where i need for, for better studies for explaining concepts better we i need a some kind of an invention and that's where this idea of the blackboard came about today we have moved from blackboards to smart boards okay electronic blackboard is again gone old now the innovation is smart boards where you get everything in one board so today i think all colleges have moved on to smart boards now so this is an example i'm giving you live of uh, in india this is uh, shalini kumari okay so this is an eighth standard student who actually uh, made a uh, what you can say uh, made uh, has made a lot of money with her ideas and her creativity for invention so the problem she identified okay was that 
our grandmother could not climb the steps with the regular chair uh, walker that you know was there because it was of equal length so she it was very difficult for the grandmother to climb every day it was something that she kept on seeing uh, you know her mother grandmother having problems and so she came up with a solution okay of adjustable uh, uh, legs where you could adjust it as per the stairs and that concept she uh, this uh, uh, this particular design or innovation that she had patented and then it was uh, taken up by a nagpur based industry okay who are manufacturing them commercially and for every product that uh, it sells 100 rupees is her royalty okay so this is how it is it invention doesn't mean that it will only be uh, not it is non utilizable it has to it should have a commercial value to it and companies are looking at inventors today as we all already know okay so why do we need ideas because it's a consumer world everything is um, whether we need it or not it is very important want need desire so if you don't want it if you don't need it then you may want it like an iPhone, uh, like, and I can give you the best example is, do we actually require an iPhone? I mean, a normal phone with an Android smartphone also is good enough because after all, whatever we are doing is the same, but desires, okay? So marketplace does not just feel the need, it feels the want, need, and desires, okay? So, and if there is no desire, then you have to create it in the market. And so that is how the market works, right? So if you don't innovate, you will perish. And that is the thumb rule of the market. Now, why is intellectual? What is intellectual property? As we have already known, I've already told you it is IPR. Intellectual deals, to, uh, deals with the mind, the technical side of things, the scientific part of, or you can say, the, uh, the definition. Okay, P stands for property that deals with the uh, commercial value of it. Something that is tangible, something that has a commercial value to it. That's why it's a property. Okay, so, and R refers to the rights that are person is conferred only after okay showing it or displaying it in front of the people so once you want to take protection for something you have to tell or you have to uh, disclose the information and then only you will get certain rights and every property has its or you can say every intellectual property has its own rights that they can claim and these rights are given only for a specific period of time so you can't have a right which is forever and eternity Okay, because then that will kill the market competition. So we have to remember it is we need uh, what you can say we need the protection, but it will only should be given for an otherwise it becomes a monopolistic market, which again is not uh, for the benefit of the society. Right. So IPR is a strong tool to protect investments, time, money, efforts, which is put in by the investor, uh, by the inventors. Okay. So imagination breeds creativity and creativity uh, gives you commercial value. Okay. So this is what I had just said. So the concept of ownership is critical to the property. So we understand now what is property. Property is something that can be touched. Well, it has a value to it. Okay. It is a, remember when it's, once you put the word property, it means it can, it is something that can be bought and sold, that can be shifted, transferred, can be given for some time, can be, you know, so it is a property. So it is behaves this particular, even if it is your idea, which is a tangible asset, behaves like a property. Right. So uh, if there are any questions at any point of time, uh, do please convey if, if at all there are. Okay. So rights are what? It is the change according to the situation. So rights are entitlement, privilege, power. So that is why that is where the legal aspect comes into play. Okay. Just by creating something, you don't get this. Chaptak, we don't ask for the rights. We are not going to get it. Right. So therefore, we need to register for them. And that is where the legal legality or the legal aspects come into play. That once you do registration of anything that is going to give you your intellectual property rights, you are going to be entitled, privileged, or you will have the power to uh, to uh, use the, uh, use the uh, what you can say, your intellectual property, you know, to utilize it, to assign it, to loan it, okay, so to take royalty for it you can make commercial value out of it. So this is what it is. Intellectual property is basically science, commerce, and law coming together, okay? So in order for the uh, betterment of the society plus the betterment of the person who is the inventor or the innovator. So need for IP protection because it is all about protection. 
we if we don't protect then anybody can copy today we talk a lot of lot about plagiarism so plagiarism means that you are using someone else's work and citing it okay in your in the same way as they have done okay so we don't have the right to steal someone's property but anybody can steal if you are not registering firm so there is in ip we have to learn about what should be registered what can be registered don't don't need to be registered and if you don't register okay then what are the implications of it so that is by itself it's a very big field and uh, so we have business assets with tangible and intangible assets so intangible assets have already told you that it is to do with the human mind human creativity ideas and all and once you business both are business assets but the uh, what you can say once we say intangible uh, intellectual property it is intangible asset till the time you make it into a tangible asset so that is where the differentiation lies in. so we can see uh, intellectual property rights may when we say industrial properties we mean patents trademarks uh, industrial designs trade secrets okay uh, biodiversity integrated circuits and geographical indications so some of them uh, everyone must have heard also all the students also must have heard about it okay and uh, so these are your prop, uh, rights which you can say need definitely need to be registered for protections and copyright is your creativity this is the artistic expression of of your mind okay so industrial property generally if you see patents industrial design trademark they are also artistic it's not that they are not but when we say copyright it is a very different kind of right which we will Uh, see in 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 a uh, little bit. Okay. So these are the tools of IP are available to everybody. Actually, not just in India. Trademark, patents, trade secrets, as we have already seen. Utility design का मतलब होता है industrial design. So out of the IPs that we uh, we know of, okay, trade secrets are soft IPs. The reason for them is because they are very confidential. We'll talk about it later on. Okay, why they are called soft IPs? And we have got two kinds. of intellectual property as you can see one side you will see on the right hand side of my hand this side it is written registrable that is things or intellectual properties that you need to register to get proper protection for it okay so that no one else can utilize it okay without your permission and unregisterable means that you don't have to register them they are not compulsory to be registered okay if you register them it's good but you don't have to register because something that comes out of your mind which is creative okay once you write a poetry okay and uh, it, you have the proof that you have written it it's your intellectual property the day it is created so you don't have to register okay a copyright but you need to register uh, uh, trademarks patents and industrial designs but that doesn't mean that you don't register at all any copyrights you should register because when you fight for infringement cases if you have a registered copyright that is a much better uh, what you can say strong hold for you to get your uh, what you can say uh, damages okay so penalties as we say then it goes as per that so what are the various types of uh, acts okay that we have in india that is trademark act patent act copyright design uh, gi and uh, all these acts actually came about in trips agreement okay which was ratified uh, after the paris convention so after uh, ip has become very strong in india today because of the trips agreement that we went into and it got ratified somewhere in 2000 2008 okay so since then i think lot of a uh, lot of people have become aware of uh, intellectual property because of the global market coming into play okay because ipr is to everything to do with the global market so i'll give you like for example earlier uh, let's say Uh, earlier playback uh, this composers music composers used to go abroad listen to songs okay uh, and they used to come back and make it change it little bit and bring make it their thing and they earned a lot of money for it and uh, everybody can uh, maybe you all have heard that song jab koi baat bigad jaye so that actually is a song that is actually in a, a very old 1960s song okay 500 miles so when uh, you know we when we were not so much into the global arena okay so we didn't know that thing right but today if you try to copy someone's music uh, even from abroad immediately there is a copyright infringement case so why does that happen because of this reason all right 
so people have become aware uh, global we have entered a global market in such a big way now so therefore we need to be at the level at the standard of the same uh, countries so therefore we require uh, to know and to uh, you know protect our own property at the same time understand that if you copy someone else's property what happens so let's start with the first one that is trademark i think everyone can all the students actually can see it and relate with it so it is something trademarks is something that you just see immediately and you know what it is right so nobody even has to write down i am loving it right everybody knows the so moment you see this yellow m you know that it's a mcdonald right and immediately you know mcdonald in burgers if you see the middle logo of a mercedes benz you know it's a car so trademarks are something that you immediately see and you identify with what they are with what it is representing the company uh, whether it is a service based company or whether it is a, a a beverage company or whatever it is something that jo dekhte saath hi humko pata chalta okay we can identify so these are called as trademarks trademarks ka second name also is logos as everybody knows okay so we have trademarks then we have got service marks which we you can see and identify immediately what kind of service they are providing right so we have two kinds trademarks and service marks everybody knows trademark tm is written so when you see this icon of or you can say this logo of tm okay written on upon some logo it means that it is a trademark and when you see sm written it is a service mark now these two trademark and service mark okay they are not registered so that's why once your trademark is registered you will see actually this logo registered trademark r written in front of the company okay so when it is tm it is unregistered trademark when it is sm it is unregistered service mark all right so now we can say that uh, it is we know what is trademark it is a distinctive sign indication individual business organization okay so whatever it is whatever you can identify now for to get trademark it doesn't mean just today uh, like you know earlier trademarks like you can see a big uh, we have uh, uh, let's say dasi dara malai it's an indian very old uh, sweet mart right we all know about it okay people in abroad may also be knowing about it or people people in india may be knowing about it everywhere okay now it is something that they have not registered okay it is a trademark so what does that tell you trademark will get protection okay so long as it is identifiable by everybody all over okay so it is very important to understand this aspect of trademark that trademark ko dekhte saath hi you have to identify with what this product is what the service is okay then only you can register for a trademark okay it has to have its own identity and today we can see that you know trademark is actually a oil company so yahan pe uh, pharma branding okay like for example uh, this uh, dolo paracetamol dolo so dolo is a brand right everybody in uh, in pharma will identify with you know dolo being paracetamol so it is a trademark so therefore you know they don't need to register it but today all branding companies actually register their marks okay it can be a color it can be a combination of colors it can be a uh, shape also at times okay so uh, that is what trademark is okay so as we know it is a typical mark it can be a phrase logo symbol image design uh, jingles it can be anything that can identify uh, like for example the moment you uh, you talk about uh, music tunes so uh, i am loving it ke sath mein ya uh for that matter uh when windows opens right and uh, we all uh, open windows whenever we switch on our laptops and the window opens there is a distinctive music that comes with it that sound okay that is actually a trademark okay so we can have trademarks okay which are particular like for example mgm so mgm has having the trademark you know uh, of that voice of the lion roaring or fox is having of that uh, light uh, that uh, you can say the torch light okay or dream works is having of that particular music tune that comes in so you not just something that is like you know a phrase or a logo or a symbol even these kinds of you know moving trademarks we call them are also uh, you know we can also take protection for them uh, when it comes to scents uh, some of you may be aware that uh, the uh, the scents that have been you know trademark okay Uh, one of them is that uh, wimbledon uh, the, uh, you know when we are having that wimbledon green lush grass 
okay the first smell of it that has been trademarked can you believe it it is not something that you have touched or you have just the smell right but that also but in very few cases okay it's not that all the perfume industry can go and trademark it's not like that okay then you can uh, then you uh, certain trademarks are with regards to the what you can say um, uh, this uh, there is this uh, velvet material okay that uh, covers a bottle of a, a beverage company okay so that velvet that touch the feel the color okay it's a royal blue velvet with a golden thread on it so that by itself the touch and the taste and the feel is everything is trademark it's a very difficult trademark to get but there are only very few like these that exist okay so we have got you can just see these are few examples of trademarks for us uh so types of trademarks okay so everybody knows you can do trademarks uh cadbury we all already know cadbury can design cadbury so likha hua uske upar that's a uh, you can mark it on the uh, brands okay on the goods so that is a type of trademark uh ye uh, flower pencil good night then words also and words means not just any word okay you have to combine words in such a manner that they have to have a uniqueness about them okay so bandaid kodak like kodak uh no one knows actually what kodak means because it does not have any meaning to it it's just a word that they have put okay so something like which is unique to them so the moment we say kodak okay immediately people know that we are talking about a uh, cameras or we can reels okay films so lego letters like atnt ysl ibms then we have got uh, catch phrases as we know various types okay let it be a best a man can get men will be men have a break have a kit kat and see how they keep on changing uh, have a break have a kit kat was earlier when people identify with it nowadays it is kit kat break banta hai so you keep on changing and make it catchy more and more catchy so that people remember it okay so that is uh, or any jingle that you write which identifies the product okay is uh, because you are worth it so something like that so so uh, is it good trademark okay signatures like johnny walker at mcdonalds then title of a book or a magazine playboy film fair india today so we identify what it is in what is film fair it's, it's a information a magazine which gives you information regarding films and and regarding entertainment aspect okay so immediately you can identify with it combination of numerals okay these are different types as you can see symbols logos depicted wranglers clothes have their own designs okay kit kat as you can see over here hershey's Uh, that uh, kiss that uh, a chocolate okay that shape you can you, they, it is trademark tobler on is trademark okay so there are different types of trademark so long as you can prove that it is unique people identify with it the moment they will see it they will know what it is that's where the trademark comes into play okay now these are many infringement cases over the period of time and it keeps on happening so you can actually go to google and you can see a few uh, infringement uh, there is spicy ip website where you can actually go and they have a, a or a, or what you can say intellectual kanun dot com something like that is also there so once you go to google you can see how many infringement trademark infringement cases are there okay so let's move on to the next ip uh, copyright i hope everyone is with me because i can't see this is not a lecture so i don't know what the reaction is okay i hope that uh, you know you find it at least knowledgeable and entertaining little bit all right so this is copyright so we know what is copyright it is a creativity the artistic expression it can be music it can be uh, a screenplay it can be a sculpture it can be a building design upar ka though it comes in architect but it is a copyright okay so all those comes under copyright anything that is a creative expression now copyright came into existence because of one invention which was the most important invention to be, have come okay in the modern history and that was printing press now why printing press because without printing press okay this invention that you made at your place okay or your invention okay could not be what what is the right copyright means what that you get a right to copy so that means that this copyright or duplication rights would not have come into existence without the printing press for example you wrote a book right so you have written a novel i mean uh, jk rowling would write a harry potter one series and then you know if there was no copy and no printing press then what she'll have to write it like 100 400 people she would keep on writing the same thing so that you cannot do anything with that right only one copy what can you do with it right so copyright actually flourished 
because of the invention of printing press. So today, if J.K. Rowling wants to send it to the entire world, I mean, you can just print, right? So that's where the copyright actually flourished, okay? But also the growth of piracy as we know, right? So it is the literary right to copy. So it is the right to copy. That's why it is something that has come up because of the invention of, you can say, the printing press. So the copyright is derived from the expression copy of words first used in the context in 18, uh, 1586 in Oxford. Uh, dictionary so you can say it is basically copyrighted ip acquired by an author composer etc to protect the expression of work created okay it is the right to authorize the reproduction of their work or make copies so it, it is a right that you can do give the right to somebody for reproducing or give to yourself for reproducing and if you can reproduce then only you will make money out of it as a commercial value okay so it is an automatic right, as I said, copyright clearly you don't have to register the moment you be, uh, you are a writer and you come up with a storyline, okay, you write a, a storyline, it is automatically in your name, okay, now you can say that uh, this is what happens in film industry many times, right, you have seen in, in, in movies and in plays, right, he, uh, the person is a creative person, he is a writer, he will go to the director and he will tell the story, this is story, and then the story that uh, he, the director will not give him, okay, say Bikar Bakwa story. Hai. But you will see, he will see that the story already has been now put into production. So, of course, it is right, it is infringement on his intellectual property, right? So, as such, he can obviously, uh, because it is a born right, the day you create it, it be rights becomes to you, uh, comes to you. So, of course, the writer has a uh, you know, uh, has the right to sue him for infringement, okay, or copying his uh, his uh, intellectual property. But for that, he has to also prove that he came up with that idea, that it was his storyline, when did he create. So therefore, you will have to for actually uh, making uh, what you can see, suing someone for infringement and uh, defamation, or you can say rather making money, uh, you know, getting damages, you really literally have to prove. That you have copyright ye book, jo thi, ye, ye screenplay, uh, ye, kya kata, kahani ki storyline, kab likhi, kitte baje likhi. You have to have a log books to be maintained to actually prove. And that this time I uh, made this person here. And you know, then after that this came in. It's not something that you just bolte saati ho jata. So it is something that you have to prove. Okay. But if you had registered for it, you don't need to register. But if you had registered for it, it would be there. Right? It will be in your name and you didn't have to pre prove that. So like uh, any IPR would be, it is better to register for it. Okay, because then you own it rather than just putting it out there. Okay, so uh, any right, any IPR is a negative right. So negative right ka matlab hi hota hai ki it prohibits someone else from doing. You don't have to do, but it, you can also prevent others from doing. It. Okay, so this is, this is the nature. That is why it's a monopoly. Right, and therefore it has to be given specific period only. So if you see a trademark, trademark is given for ten years, and then it is renewable. You can keep on renewing it, okay, for unlimited uh, for your eternity till that time you are using that trademark. Okay, so if you keep on renewing, it remains in your name. If you stop, okay, then uh, you will lose that IP. So now, yeah, uh, what is copyright? Copyright is also the same thing. So when you uh, get copyright, basically when you, you don't have to register, like I said, for copyright. Copyright is a right that is yours till the time you die. And after you die, 60 years for to your family. Okay. So Kamalam Roy may have died long time back, but he his family will be getting the copyright cup money for uh, the films that he has made, like Michael Jackson and his family, as you can see. Okay, so they, there's a lot of speculation that you know he is worth more dead than alive. So you know today it is like that. Okay, so today uh, his uh, his music albums which sell, okay, or which are played, okay. So the royalty goes to the family till 60 years. In US, I think it is 70 years. In India, we have 60 years till the uh, rights will expire. All right, so. Copyright is not just one right, it is a bundle of rights. You have a right to reproduce, adapt, distribute, perform, display, uh, you know, economic rights, moral rights, right? So it is all together, okay? So you can yourself may become a print uh, owner of a printing press and keep uh, uh, distributing, printing and distributing your 
uh, this uh, what you can say books or you can actually go to a publishing house give them the rights okay you confer the rights to them and you get royalties of it and that's what majority what you will see happen so it is a global right so copyright is a global right are all ip rights global no okay so if you can if you say uh, trademark uh, no if you say patent patent is not a global right okay copyright by itself becomes a global right but for uh, other ips you need to register them in that country to become it uh, for it to you know have a value over there okay so copyright is a global right there is no need to register okay it is uh, uh, because of the paris convention so all the countries which come under the paris convention okay there the same rules will apply okay so around about 176 countries are there so there automatically if you have your uh, creativity uh, creative expression over here it is automatically uh, copyright uh, that protection is over there also. so categories of uh, copyrighted literary artistic musical dramatic and you know, sound recordings broadcaster performers rights everything these all come under copyrights so this is one of the copyright infringement cases so as you can see uh, this was actually uh, uh, an infringement case with respect to the photograph of this okay so this is the uh, sorry this is the original photograph all right this was the original photograph of the rapper and uh, this photograph uh, this photographer actually clicked it okay and uh, it was uh, it was in the magazine and then this beer company okay almost tried to steal the kind of same idea if you see from the other side right so uh, the photographer actually sued him for infringement uh, for infringement of his uh, trademark uh, sorry of his copyright and he was actually given uh, what you can see uh renew uh, uh, damages punitive damages were claimed okay, for this so similarly uh, there was this case of oxford versus um, rameshwari photocopy services so this is a interesting case because of the fact that this was actually oxford um, university ki library okay versus this uh, photocopier jaise hamare bahar hote na xerox so we go and you know xerox kara wale book ko kisi bhi cheez ko xerox karwa lete hain right so here they ex uh, oxford actually uh, sued the copy uh, the photocopier outside their uh, outside their premises for you know uh, reposing or you can say making copies of the books so you know but the actually the lesson uh, the the court actually ruled in favor of the uh, rameshwari photocopy the reason being that it was yes they were uh, you know giving xerox copies of certain uh, chapters or something like that they were selling that okay but it was for the uh, what you can say for the educational purposes okay so whenever you are going to photo photocopy something for educational purpose okay then you will not come under copyright infringement so that is the reason why because education has to be given to everybody freely okay so therefore there is a something that we call in movies also fair use so there is a fair use concept okay where it comes under fair use okay so there was also these cases a few ones so you can just go through them uh, in 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 uh, napster actually shut down because of this because of the amount of money that napster had to pay okay for for uh, for making people listen to music for free and joining his site napster completely wiped out of the face okay so this was one of uh, one of the interesting cases of uh, uh, this uh, bunty and bubbly movie where this particular dress <coughs> poncho okay so this particular poncho uh, was actually uh, the designer actually the designer was sunit verma but uh, the designer for this particular uh, film or right, a dress designer so what they did was that they just bought it from the they, that's what they claimed that they just needed a poncho and so they went to the uh, bandra ka local market and then they bought it from there so uh, there was a big uh, this about it and uh, sunit verma won the case over this okay because actually that was a design that he had actually put out and that the alleged buying of the from the streets was actually fake next is industrial design so industrial design is again uh, an ip that needs protection okay you need to protect it you need to register for it without that there is no protection for industrial designs so industrial designs are something that were uh, that came about you know not just now it came about long time back 
okay so the patent and design act of 1872 was the first piece of legislation on this particular uh, topic and then it was the design patent act you know, further moved on ahead so uh, the value of a creative design so you can see make a product attractive appealing so basically in short what is a what is a, 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 a what is a industrial design is basically it is a same use new way of presenting that means that you have a chair so this chair is an industrial design it can be commercialized it can be made into a uh, into a multiple uh, what you can say uh, uh, commercial value and multiply made and sold right so it has a commercial value to it okay so without it being having an industrial value or industrial application industrial design don't work and industrial design only deals with the outside exterior thing so if you if you have a beetle or you have a volkswagen ka dusra car it is in the outside protection of design okay not the inside it is the outside protection of the design for which you apply for industrial design okay registration so it is only the aesthetic visual form of a product that can be filed and protected as an industrial design so this is very important so patent not trademarks okay so this is where it differs nothing about inside if it is a bracelet design okay watch design the watch shows time it will remain same technology se kuch lena dena nahi hai outside exterior how you change the design that is where the value comes in okay so that is very important to understand so you can see table chair whatever everything that is two dimensional three dimensional everything okay has should be you should be able to make it industrial okay and it has nothing to do with the inside aspect of any product so only the aesthetic value only new novel from outside no new use no changing anything just exterior all right so these are the examples of industrial designs as you can see okay so let's talk about trade secret all right so uh, trade secret we know what it is it is the secret of a company okay so now trade secret is something that uh, you can say it is a secret that even the authorities will never know like coca cola ka uh, recipe is a trade secret okay so nobody okay they have got protection for it but nobody even in the uh, even in the ip department in the government will know what it is so trade secret is something that is uh, taken protection for by the owner if they can prove that they have taken sufficient steps to you can say okay if they have taken sufficient steps to protect the product the uh, their uh, their secret and that you know it is important for the flourishing of their company then only you get a trade secret and trade secrets are not to be told even to the uh, where you register all right so what are trade uh, what are trade secrets by keeping valuable information secret you can prevent competitors from learning about and using it thereby enjoying a competitive advantage in the marketplace but in general you do not have to uh, you know tell about the trade secret but you have to prove that you have taken it is important that you have taken sufficient steps to uh, secure it like coca cola ka is in a vault okay safe and once that is proved then only you get trade secret okay protection so what kind of information you can have lots of confidential information it can be a plan it can be a business model it can be whatever you feel is an important for the uh, trade okay and that secret only belongs to you all right so all this comes under trade secrets so examples okay what makes something a trade secret and when do you have legal protection so the information must be secret it must have a commercial value and owner must have taken reasonable steps to keep it a secret so you have to prove that then only you will get trade secret okay so this is trade secret all right then you come to geographical indications okay so gi as we know today i think uh, paper may whenever you open you can see india has registered one at least not less than 70 matlab total 133 okay okay upar ho gaya but not less than uh, 70 to 80 gis have been registered in the last 10 years so what is gi it is taking protection for something that is specific to that region which will only happen in that region which is only specific to that region so that the people who are you know engaging in this can make benefit out of it it is for the society 
okay so that is geographical indication so we will look at it okay ahead so geographical indication actually came about okay in france okay so in france there are vineyards we know that okay so during the 20th century when this vineyards okay so wine was made by the priests all right the culture of making wine was made by the catholic church and you know uh, that wine and the way they made the wine the secret of making wine okay how they prepared it and that was very important to them and you know because when the wine started becoming famous the process people started to come and you know uh, steal their way of making it and adulteration came into existence and that is where the protection for uh, geographical indications came about that means that the wine was made in france but a person sitting in uh, sitting in uh, you can say saudi arabia is saying we can make better wine we are also making wine okay so this is where the whole thing changed the perspective of you know what is geographical indication and the word protection came into existence so therefore you can see gi me likha hua it is all other goods and wine spirits okay so uh, that is where the gi has gi means that any geographical indication means that ye particular product ye particular art ye particular cultivation is particular region mein isliye hoti hai because ye yahan ka specific hai इसका सॉइल में कुछ है जिसके कारण से वो टेस्ट अलग है ये यहाँ के जो लोग हैं जो पुराने लोग हैं जिनके अंदर जैसे वार्ली पेंटिंग यू नो विच इज फॉर द पीपल ऑफ दोज ट्राइब्स एंड दे ओनली नो दैट आर्ट ओके सो नाउ यू कम देर यू लर्न इट एंड यू गो अवे एंड यू स्टार्ट मेकिंग वार्ली पेंटिंग एट होम एंड यू स्टार्ट सेलिंग इट इट्स एक्चुअली कॉपिंग समन एल्स इज लर्निंग समन एल्स इज ट्रेड ट्रेड एंड देन गोइंग एंड मेकिंग इट योर ओन एंड किसका लॉस हुआ दैट कम्युनिटी लूज इज आउट and that is the reason why today india is filing left right and center for gis we have in the last rasgulla was the last filed one for gi we have got uh, tirupati balaji ke uh, laddu has come under gi okay so there are so many uh, so many gi that has been filed okay so what is geographical indication it is an indication it originates from a dif definite geographical territory it is used to identify agricultural natural or manufactured goods okay the manufactured goods should be produced or processed or prepared in that territory and it should have a specific quality or reputation let's say how what we say hapusa kolapuri chappal so all these are specific when you say kolapuri chappal so gi will always be with that indication ye kahan ka hai all right okay so that's very important so we have got basmati rice darjeeling tea okay all these are some of the examples okay so of uh, this now this is a right that is not an individual right keep in mind it is a right given to an association it is for the people of that association that region who all manufacture it or who all practice the art or who all are growing okay that right comes to all of them so that they can all utilize it it is an association it is not an individual who gets the protection it is not ki gaon ka sarpanch ya mukhiya ko ek ko milega no nothing like that sort it's a protection to an association so people who belong in that association okay once they register their gi they make lot of money out of exporting the uh, exporting the goods so they learn so that economy improves the prosperity comes into the uh, into that particular part and that is why you need to protect the this everybody knows this very famous uh, basmati uh, rice case so uh, just in a short uh, this so basmati is a rice that is uh, you can say geographically for india right long grain rice with a aroma so basmati by itself means aroma right so this long grain rice with aroma so us has been actually trying to make basmati rice their own because basmati rice the export is actually done only from india right earlier so imagine if this particular now remember i like i said in india we never used to do geographical indications now we have started with it because now we have realized the importance of it there were certain cases which brought it about it actually so basmati was one of them then turmeric was the other one that brought about the importance of gi so yahan pe so uh, a rice tech company in us has come up with uh, text mati and some other matis and everything and they have claimed it to have a long grain rice with smell and everything and so actually us actually granted the patent uh, granted this patent uh, this uh, you know to them regarding the uh, regarding this okay gi so patent is with regards to technology that they got but they were taking a geographical indication for this and if they take this then 30% of the market exports becomes theirs and that was not acceptable okay because it belongs to india and so ayush 
okay and india companies actually indian government fought nail and tooth for us and ultimately the 20 uh, uh, indications that they had claimed at the end of it all okay they were left with only two or three indications or you can say rather not patents rather than indications because they just they could only claim the technology they could only claim kyunki ye altered hai gmo types so therefore they could only claim the technology but they could not get a uh, you can say a durable indication for it so we still are the number one basmati exporters in the world okay so uh, all this was regarding the case okay so uh, then last let's move on to the patent okay so we know as pharmacist uh, or as belonging to the pharma world so this is what we actually are uh, go for you know it is the scientific information the technical aspect the creativity is with regards to you know uh, you can say enhancement of something or you know we we we, we have a different way of technically enhancing something right scientifically so what are patents we all already know so patent is the legal document that is granting its holder the right to prevent exclude third parties from commercially using an invention without authorization it is again a negative right right it's a monopolistic right so but this right will only come about if you disclose everything okay so you need to disclose everything about your uh, innovation uh, innovation or uh, okay in order for you to get protection it is geographical so just because you patented in india and you got granted in india doesn't mean you got got granted in the entire world you will actually go have to go to the entire world and and actually go and take protection over there clear yeah. so it is a uh, it is a, a geographical you know specific rights okay so it is a limited period of 20 years it is a monopolistic right again uh, 20 years is extension you need to keep renewing your ip every year then only it remains otherwise they lapse okay so it is an exclusive right given for 20 years to prevent others from making using selling the invention without the permission okay and in return the inventor has to disclose the entire information okay so advantages gives royalties and support to invent inventors avoids duplication of research gives you you know because you are keep, keep on developing you get protection therefore you can innovate and develop new technologies okay so uh, obviously so uh, in researchers r&d industrial companies everyone is today now like nowadays looking for invention so it is not like previous time okay in india we are a little lagging when it comes to invention still so but i think slowly we are getting there okay it is not only about the generic market anymore it is not only about reverse engineering it is about innovation as well now and it is becoming a necessity be it academics or be it industry it is a necessity for growth everywhere okay so it is a uh, technology development happens why when a patent uh, when a, obviously the patent jo tha it goes off patent and the it ex, uh, and you can say that the uh, term is over okay so you need to uh, commercialize this okay during that uh, during you have the protection success the uh, you can make pro profit out of your ip and uh, once it's out of uh, patent and then you have the other generic markets coming into play where again the commercial aspect comes into existence and so it's always going to be full of money making okay and uh, so uh, in uh, i think uh, in tcs syllabus actually ipr is not there as a subject but i think ipr as a subject was there in the earlier syllabus and it actually was very helpful in understanding what is ip fully okay so ip according to the indian patent act is a new product or a process involving an inventive step and capable of industrial application ye teen requirements zaruri hai okay if you have to prove that your product or, or your process is new india was not earlier for product patent after the trips agreement got ratified then only we have started with new products the product you know uh, we have to be uh, we give patent now for the products earlier it was only for the process right it has to have an inventive step and it has to have an industrial application so if this particular three things are satisfied then only you will be granted a patent and very important is you have product process patent and it has to be uh, non obvious to the person skilled in the art that means what that the person okay skilled in the art that means if i am the inventor in a field of uh, pharma this particular uh, coating that i am putting okay it should not be obvious that another technical person can also say are ye to hona hi tha ye to karna tha it should be non obvious to the person skilled in the 
okay so that is very important and so the word non obvious okay always comes with the person skilled in the art not to a layman okay to the person skilled in the art it be has to be new inventive step and industrial use this is the procedure for the grant of the patent so as you can say it is always first to file so patent is a scientific invention right it is to do with the science the technical aspect of things uh, there is a big debate about uh, you know who invented the electric bulb so invention invention of electric bulb is also you know uh, shredded with a lot of doubts if they say that one one of the theories is that uh, uh, you know edison actually patented he was the first to file by one minute for the patent and there was another inventor who actually was also right there with it but he was the first to file he got that one minute edge and that's why the patent got granted and his name so remember whenever you're talking about patents it is the first to file okay so if you are first to file with your invention then only uh, you you will get the first priority of anywhere in the world even if you go anywhere in the world or any in country and go and file so isliye if you have an invention the first thing you need to do is share okay uh, get protection for it even if it is an idea that you know you have worked on maybe 25% you are not yet fully there so if you have an idea and you are not fully there but you have some data to prove it like a proof of concept then you file for a provisional specification okay and then you have one year complete one year is given to you and six months if you again have to fill the form and ask for extension maximum extension is given till six months okay for you to file a complete specification that means the complete invention with results and everything okay and if you are not able to file it within that uh, 18 months period so then it will be considered abandoned it is right in front now nobody else can take that idea neither can you work on it because now you will not get a protection for it okay so either you can file with a provisional specification or with a complete specification okay so now we know that provisional specification ke baad you have a certain limit of time where you go for complete specification you have to file complete specification about 18 months maximum you get for it once you are filing with complete specification you will fill the forms and all forms all have challans everyone has fees all right and you cannot uh, file it on your own you need to have a patent agent okay you need to have a patent agent for filing ips uh, for uh, this uh, what you can say even for that matter to file uh, trademark uh, copyright whatever everything all ips require a approved agent there are exams of government okay patent agent exam and other exams where you have to sit and you have to pass then only you can apply for it okay so with complete specification uh, you then request you have to then it's not that ki specification ho gaya you have to actually uh, pay again fees like request for examination okay and you have to request for it by themselves they are not going to examine it all right so you will have to request for examination okay and after the uh, yeah, after the examination is over you will get the fer that is the first examination report okay so once you get that uh, first examination report all right then you will have to file a uh, what you can say a reply to them if they have objections to something then you have to go back and forth on the appellate uh, in the uh, in the office okay patent office regarding there will be meeting there will be a judge who will hear you know this uh, when you are filing Yeah, opposition if there is an opposition pre grant or post grant opposition that is also to be answered by the inventor okay so that uh, you know you can have objections you can have pre grant before the grant of the patent and after the grant of the patent as well so pre grant and post grant opposition both are there so provisions are made in the patent act for both of them so once you file the fe uh, that uh, file the re rebuttal you can say for the fer that is the first examination report then it will go back to the uh, hearing or the controller and then if they will see whether you have complied with all the objections supposing if they still have objections then they'll again send you another report and they'll tell you to make some changes okay and if you're okay with it and you know they can be that you may have put a scope of your patent very broad so they may tell you to narrow it down so then accordingly you will uh, function with the controller and with the objections sometimes you can uh, so that you will not be granted a patent but you may have to cut down a few claims of yours which were very broad taking in lot of aspect okay so then there you will have to come uh, shorten your claims okay and then again refile it and then again once you are refiled then again it will be uh, there will be a, a, a what you can say the examination will be done hearing by the controller and then the, finally there are orders which can come either you will be granted 
after making all the changes and all, or it, you will be refused. If you are refused the patent, if you are not granted, then you can appeal to the appellate board. Okay. So if you have granted the patent, then you can see. Uh, you remember, 18 months can the it uh, depending upon fast track. Okay, publications. Now there is something called as fast track publications. So depending upon what you are uh, going for, 18 months ke baad tumara publication in a patent journal aayega. Uh, not full. What is the gist of your work? Okay, that will come. Whatever you have put. Okay, 18 months may publication hoga. Uske baad hearing and everything will happen. And once you are granted the patent, then they will issue you a uh, what you can say a grant uh, certificate. Okay, which you have to keep on uh, renewing every year. So you have to keep on renewing it. Okay, so it's not that just uh, once you're granted and you are done for it. No, if you want to continue. To let it remain in your name every year, you will be keeping on renewing the patent. So, in post grant opposition, so who can do pre grant? The pre grant opposition generally comes from the examiners, okay, and the post grant uh, or the person who is skilled, uh, who is interested, uh, uh, the person of interest, okay? they can file for, uh, they can apply for post grant, uh, pre grant opposition. Okay, and post grant opposition comes from. Uh, it can also. Uh, it can. It. Uh, it will be again after granting. Also, you still have time. Uh, you can still apply for a post grant opposition, stating that this is invalid, or it is not new. It is not novel, and that you know you can again uh, challenge the uh, during this process also. So again, this process. Okay, it, nearly a grant of a patent takes time, uh, but it depends upon how. Uh, like you know, uh, whether it is. Novel, uh, you know, and the judges do not find, you know, or the examiners do not find too many uh, problems with it. But you will have to satisfy the three requirements: new, novel, has an inventive step, any, uh, and it is has a commercial value. Then you will be granted a patent. A patent is for twenty years, okay, uh, grant. Uh, so we can also file. So once you are granted the patent, you can actually go for PCT. That is, uh, uh, you can go for PCT filing. That is, uh. Applying in other countries through the MIPO uh, process of PCT filing, so that is a login by long process, okay, by itself. So these are the patent agent office, uh, pat, uh, government patent offices, Chennai, uh, Kolkata, Mumbai, okay. So they are uh, these are all the various uh, Mumbai and Delhi. You can see, okay, and uh, term life term of a patent, and we uh, the normal fees that is there for patent filing. So I'll end here. Thank. Uh, so creativity is intelligence having fun. So remember, invention was something. Innovation, invention was something that happened, used to happen in old times. Okay, where things were new. Now it is all about innovation. And so, the more you have fun with your thought process, the innovation, the more commercial value you may have for it. Right. Uh, so I'll stop the sharing now. Thank you so much. If there are any questions. Thank you, madam. That was a wonderful session. Uh, we have some some queries from our uh, delegates. Yes. I just post to you. Then the first query is about uh, what does it mean to license a patent? So uh, this is a, a licensing a patent means that you have a monopolistic right. right? So it's up to you if you don't want to practice the patent because remember patents have to be worked. Okay. Earlier, uh, actually, this is a good question because earlier. Uh, many companies also, okay, and inventors like you know, we uh, what we used to do is uh, like what uh, it uh, used to be done was that you um, get a patent and then you block the drug, okay, and it is not now because nobody else has a monopolistic right, so nobody else can make that drug. So what happens is company abhi man nahi kar ra, we don't want to work it. Abhi we don't want to manufacture in, in this particular country right now. We don't want to spend money on it. We will keep it. And so people used to actually, uh, what you can say, uh, either work it themselves or they never used to, used to keep it or they used to give it. You can actually give it for li uh, licensing to some other company. You can have a uh, license it to some other company, make the manufacture and take royalties or profit, whatever your contract. Be. So you can do that with patents because patents at the end of the day uh, for commercial value. So, you know, companies uh, earlier used to uh, block the product and keep it, but now government has become very strict regarding this. But if you want to actually not practice it, but at the same time want to let someone else practice it, someone else manufacture and sell it, you can actually go into a contract with it. 
and uh, you know you can put your points ahead as a company key this is the amount of profitability or the margin whatever wherever they want to focus on okay you can do that it's allowed okay madam uh, the next question is if you make any change ch changes in any devices can can you patent that okay so device uh, if you are changing uh, see yahan pe device means uh, like a scientific technical device if you are talking about it okay then if anything technology related changes then you can get a patent for if anything only outside related changes then you have to go for industry design okay. but if you change anything in technology okay which is scientific or technical there you can actually apply for patent because patent is a scientific document that's all right uh one question from uh, personally my side madam uh, as i am from a clinical pharmacy background uh, we do this uh, questionnaire scales for certain di diseases okay scales uh, you mean to scoring scoring scales yeah. Yeah, yeah how what can we do can we go for copywriting it or patenting it what is the appropriate thing that we should be doing it? this is uh, i think you get to copyright it because it is again uh, uh, it is it, it is again values that uh, you know that you have come up with okay if it is uh, basically actually it is uh, it's very complicated this particular thing because it comes under a kind of copyright also but it also is a technical aspect also yes so yes. yeah so if you want to actually get a patent for it i would suggest that you know you build some device around it which is little technical and then you know you can prove that the values for and okay. so you can take a patent for it that would be a much uh, much uh, what you can say better protection better. for it. yeah fine, fine thank you madam thank you for your time now i would like to request uh, mr sen manusri uh, to deliver the vote of thanks madam kindly unmute yourself okay am i audible sir Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Good evening, one and all, for gathering this webinar on IPR organized by IIC Saint Peters. I, Manushri Naredla, Assistant Professor at Saint Peters, would like to present the vote of thanks. It's a pride for me that I got a chance to thank everyone for organizing this webinar. Firstly, I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Prabha Singh Man, Assistant Professor, Banu Ben Nanavati College of Pharmacy, Mumbai, for giving enlightening talk on IPR. then i thank our chairman sri t jepal reddy for his continuous encouragement i would also like to thank our billard principal dr p rashikar dr rashri durke hod department of pharmaceutics for their continuous support i thank pravin devanandan hod department of pharmacy practice convener iic and randeep chaudhary vice president iic and all the faculty members for making this webinar successful i would also like to thank all non teaching faculty and student members for being a part of this event thank you ma'am thank you thank you madam thank I, you for your time and thank you for all your uh... i hope uh, it was not boring <laughs> i don't know the reactions <laughs> no no ma'am <laughs> thank you so much madam and uh, thank all delegates we will come back with another session in a, in a couple of days on uh, entrepreneurship sensitization program we'll meet you on friday thank you